Hello, this is Howard Teaser King coming to you with the Super Bowl pick. I've been analyzing this game. I think I got it down pretty good. The pick's already on the site. It's a lock, but I will give it because it's the Super Bowl. Uh, generally, if there's a lock and there's only one or two games, and I have so many customers who have bought the lock or bought the season, it's hard to give the... You know, I can't give it because everybody's bought it. I can't just give it out, they'll get offended, so I don't want to offend anybody. But being the Super Bowl, I will uh, help whoever needs needs the pick. Alright, uh, let's get into the game. Let's look at the trend. Uh, you got basically, this is a road game. So the first thing I look at is Denver is a road favorite. Denver, 12-2 and two is a road favorite the last two years. And 43 and 10 the last 53 games in a teaser. So if you bet Denver 53 times, you win 43 of them. 12 and 2 is a road favorite. Um, so they don't have any problem playing on the road. Where past Denver teams had a problem, they were great in Mile High because of the altitude. But when they got on the road, they they were terrible. Uh, Peyton Manning takes care of that. Let's look at Seattle now as a road dog. Remember, it's a road game for both. Seattle is a road dog. They're 12 and 2 as a road dog, and they're 43 and 9 their last 52 games. So you have a 12 and 2 road favorite in Denver against the 12 and 2 road dog in Seattle. So you have a very evenly matched trend. 43 and 9 versus 43 and 10. These teams win and cover, and they're the best two teams. I've been doing this for well, about, let's say, 45 years, conservatively. Started when I was like 10. Probably before that. I probably started when I was 5. I remember Joe Namath on the Sundays and uh, watching him and the Oakland Raiders and Daryl LaMonica. So I, I go back quite a ways. Uh, I remember the Steelers beating the Vikings in all the Super Bowls and the Packers and the common theme with the Packers and the Steelers and the Bears and the Giants defense wins defense beats offense um, Steelers beat the Cowboys with Roger Staubach they had the better defense even the 49ers with Joe Montana had a very good defense they were not just an offensive team what I'm driving at is defense beats offense because the defense can shut them down. It's like the Baltimore Ravens, the Giants, the Giants against Buffalo. Let's take the Giants, Buffalo. Giants win the game 20 to 19. It's a similar spread. They were getting two or three points. Um, basically, the Giants shut Buffalo down to field goals. But the key was the Giants' offense. Even with Jeff Hostetler, were able to move the ball enough on on Buffalo, and uh, that was the difference. I think the same thing happens here. Seattle will move the ball on Denver. Uh, they won't have a problem. They put up 23 points on San Francisco, who's got a hell of a lot better defense than Denver's got. So this is what you have to look at. This isn't Denver, New England, with all their players out on defense, New England. Vince Walfuck's out. Uh, the other guy, uh, their cornerback, um, I can't think of his name, the best corner who got uh, kneed by Wes Welker for a thank you for when they let him go uh, and he took him out of the game with a cheap shot so what you have here is um, you don't have New England's the, and even against New England they only scored 26 points and they had four field goals New England keeps them out of the end zone so what do you think Seattle's going to do Seattle's got the best secondary second best secondary to Arizona's got the best secondary when Honey Badger's healthy because Patrick Peterson it just shows you how good the LSU players are versus the Alabama players because you see the best players are LSU, and you don't really see a whole lot of Alabama buys in the secondary doing anything. Um, the point being, defense will shut it down. They will not let, first of all, Thomas won't catch a pass. They'll put uh, Sherman on him. They'll put the safety, the big fella on uh, the tight end or that the other Thomas. Welker, will be, he'll be blown off the ball. He won't catch anything. Um, they won't run that little short route like New England was giving them. New England put no pressure on the quarterback. Seattle will put pressure on the quarterback. 
The other thing is Pete Carroll did win a lot of championships at USC with defense. And he had Clay Matthews, and they would put pressure on the quarterback. He's not going to let Manning sit there like New England did. I thought New England was terribly coached last week. One of Belichick's worst coach. You can't just sit there and let him do how many eight-minute drives did he give up? And what's he doing? And Tom Brady looked like crap. That was the worst game Tom Brady's played in, in a while. It looked like he bet on Denver. I mean, he he missed the wide open guy earlier in the game, Edelman. He missed the other guy in the end zone. Was wide open. I think they scored a touchdown on it later. Guy was wide open. He overthrew him by ten yard, ten feet over his head. I mean, it looked like Brady bet on uh, Denver. I'd never seen Brady in a big game do that. Um, we did have Brady and we did have Frisco, but we had eleven and a half in Brady. We had Frisco nine and a half, so we won. I am ten and zero in the playoffs this year. Uh, I'm looking to make it eleven and zero. So the bottom line here is, when I look at the game, I try to look at who do I think is going to win, and I can't give you a winner. So then I go, what do I think the score is going to be? Here's my guess: 23-13 Seattle. How can they going to hold Denver? Well, the other factor that you're not realizing is the game's in New York. Why? Who knows? And it's so unlucky for Peyton Manning. Here he finally gets there. He's going to be in 20-degree weather, probably snow or rain, which is terrible for him and good for Seattle. They, they live in the rain. They live in the bad weather. And the cold weather will not bother the defense in a running game like it will a passing game. Uh, what did Tom Brady say before the game in Denver? Well... The reason we ran it so much against Indy because it was cold and rainy and we couldn't throw. So therefore, if Tom Brady can't throw in New England, but all of a sudden he goes to Denver and says, we're going to open it up. And if that was open, then New England's got a lot of problems. Uh, if that's what the, he opened it up, uh, and even then it was a 26-16 game. It's a 42 total point, and they only beat him by 10 at home you know, with a far inferior defense. So with all that said, Seattle's going to shut them down. They're going to set the receivers down, and they're going to run the ball. And Russell Wilson have enough escapes and his move, move, moveability. And they did put up 23 on Frisco. So I give them 23 here because they've scored 23 the last few games. But I give New England 13, maybe 16 points, maybe even 20. I don't give them any more than 20, maybe 17. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's say 23, 17, 23, 13, 23, 20. Somewhere along those lines. They're going to have trouble scoring and scoring touchdowns. They're going to get to Manning. Manning does not like pressure. He just goes down, and this is Manning's problem. And with that said, in the cold weather and the wind, and it's always windy in Giants Stadium. Now, the other thing is Seattle went to New York and shut out Eli Manning 23 nothing in the cold, where Denver went when it was spring, and Eli Manning threw three I think he threw two pick sixes or a fumble pick six or a fumble six. I and mean, they handed Denver two or three touchdowns. Um, so basically what you have is Seattle handled Manning and then Seattle handed Drew Brees twice. Now you can say they beat him at home. I don't really care. They handled Drew Brees. Drew Brees isn't a terrible quarterback. Just He can only play in New Orleans. I mean, that's... The dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's a good quarterback. He's an elite quarterback. Uh, they can beat him anywhere. Even in last year's game with Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay, when they when the ref made the worst call in the history of life, that score was 14 to 12. Green Bay only scored 12 points on uh, Seattle. So against the elite quarterbacks, Man, uh, P Eli Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Seattle, they don't give up a lot of points. Why will they give up a lot here? Not with that defense, not with that secondary. They are not going to get beat. The defense will win. I like Seattle. I would tease this. It's a lock teaser. You take Seattle, you get eight and a half. Maybe by game time you might get nine. The over-under is 47. You go under 53. Some places in Vegas, they only give you four points on a six-point teaser with the total. I never heard of anything so crazy in my life. I bet the over in the Green Bay Packer game, the last game of the year, because Aaron Rodgers was playing, the over-under was 52. So I said, okay, I'm going to tease the over. I knew it was a lot. And instead of getting 46, I only got 48. And I just said, it's a six-point teaser. you got to give me six points. Well, in totals, we only give you four. So if you're in Vegas and I'm going to be at Caesars, then it's, it's going to be 
eight and a half in Seattle and over 50, and under 51. But I see the game being under, especially with the weather, especially with Seattle. Seattle is a very good under team. Uh, you got to realize Seattle has. Um, they got a great defense. They run the ball. They really don't have that much of, you know, great offense. Percy Harvins will play, but who knows how long. And they're mostly a running team. And they're going to run and play good defense. And they're not going to give up a lot of touchdowns. Denver has a fairly good defense also, although Von Miller's out. Um, they got a lot of injuries last game. They'll be back, but they'll be injured. And Peyton Manning, they're going to kick a lot of field goals. So I don't know where this game goes anywhere near 47. Probably don't need it. If you can't tease it, and some some places won't allow the teaser, but on the Super Bowl I think they'd allow everything, then you just take the under 47 and Seattle and 2.5. But uh, I'll probably do both. I'll probably just make some Seattle plus 2.5 and, and Seattle plus 8.5 in and the teaser with the under. Um, it's a lock. It's a very strong play. Um, Seattle's the better team, as I say. Denver has Peyton Manning, but he can't move. And Seattle's going to get a pass rush on him. They will find the way, unlike New England, which I couldn't believe New England didn't do. San Diego beat Denver running the ball. And that's what Seattle's going to do. They're going to pound it, and Russell Wilson's going to run. And I look for Seattle to be on top and Denver trying to come back. Um, you got the cold weather in New York. And just two pretty good defense. Seattle's got the best defense, but like I said, Seattle put up 23 on Frisco. They'll not have a problem scoring here. Denver's not going to put up a 30 on Seattle. I, there's no way. This game will not get to 50. Um, I think it'll be about a 43, 46, 40. It'll be probably between 36 and 43, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, I would say 40, 42. Anyway, that's what I look at. Um, you've got to play defense over offense. Um, and Russell Wilson is not Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick, I don't know how he doesn't feel the pressure from right in his face. That I don't get. I mean, he fumbled the ball there. Um, he made a. I thought the fourth down, the the the, the game that the play that ended the game, I thought was a terrible play. Uh, they didn't need to do it. He wasn't that open. You don't go against Sherman. They should have had a play where Crabtree's on the other side, not on Sherman. Put him in motion, put him in the slot. And I think it, Kaepernick could have ran for another 10 yards. And then you could have run Gore. I mean, you had 22 seconds and some timeouts. So I think uh, Kaepernick runs the next play instead of throwing the stupid pass. And don't tell me he wasn't open. It wasn't Roethlisberger to uh, whatchamacallit, uh, to Holmes. It was a uh, you know, much different uh, play here. He would have thrown it like that, crap, you would have caught it, but the guy was not open, and you didn't need to make that throw. There was 22 seconds left, not two. I could see if it was two and it was a Hail Mary, that's fine, but not in this situation. Um, so I, I thought that was a, a bad uh, play, and I thought they shouldn't have been down. That fourth and seven, Seattle did. I thought it was terrible coverage by 49ers to let the guy catch the ball. That's ridiculous. Um, so I, I just don't buy it. I, I, uh, I honestly think Frisco is a better team than Seattle, but Kaepernick hurts them, and, and he's he's uh, he's just not a, a he's not a champion, and he's not a playoff quarterback like a Drew Brees or Rodgers. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what Frisco is going to do because I don't think they can win with this guy, the big one. Uh, he's just throws too many turnovers, and uh, he's more of a runner. You can't win with a running quarterback. Russell Wilson's really not a runner, but he will run to pick up yards to gain a first down. But, you know, it's, a, it's night and day. Anyway, plays Seattle, plays the under. Bet it, bet it strong. It's our last game. I'll be in Vegas for it. Good luck to everybody. Have a great year. Thank you for comments and watching and uh, any other comments you can make. Um, I'll have one on uh, the draft coming up soon, and uh, I'll help these teams because these teams are clueless. The more I watch these teams, they're, they're so clueless. If they would watch college football, there's a million receivers they could pick up. I don't know what New England's doing. I could have got them 20 good receivers, and they, they take these receivers that, uh, you know, they're not good in college. I don't know what they always pass. Yeah, but they can't catch. 
Nobody cares how fast you are. If you don't have hands, you don't have heart. It's all about heart. And, uh, I watch it every every Saturday. I'm watching 52 college games, and I'm seeing what's going on, and I can tell this guy's good, that guy's good. I'll give you an example. There's a guy in Texas Tech in the bowl game. The little guy was a Darren Sproles. I'd be drafting that guy very highly. This guy's unbelievable. They probably, well, he's too small. Man, bullshit, he's too small. All that guy does is get open and run and get touchdowns. So uh, I'll get his name, but at this point, I mean, these GMs are just, I don't know how they get their jobs. Of course, that's why half these teams suck, because they don't know what they're doing. They draft players that have no business being drafted. All right, well, that's the Teaser King. It's Howard. Again, uh, thank you for a great year. Um, I'm sure I would have made everybody lots of money because I made somewhere in the 60,000s and it's on the site and uh, you know all you had to do is just follow my locks I think I went 90% of my locks I I didn't lose more than three or four locks all year they were just beautiful all the plays where I got the good dogs like I say uh, somebody asked me who I liked last week I said, well it's a lock if you'd have listened to me, you'd have known. Anytime Tom Brady gets points, you bet Tom Brady. It's a lock. Tom Brady and points is a lock. Even as bad as he played, they only lost by 10, getting 11 and a half. Anytime Tom Brady, Peyton Manning gets points, you lock them. You bet them, bet them heavy. All right, everybody, have a great. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl and uh, go Seattle.